Hello everyone, welcome to the Cube Conversation here at the Palo Alto Studios for the Cube. I'm John Furrier, the co-founder of SiliconANGLE Media. We're here for some news analysis with Peter Schmales, who's the CMO of Datos.io, D-A-T-O-S.io. Hot new startup with some news. Uh, Peter was just here for a thought leader segment with Chris Cummings talking about the industry breakdown, but uh, the news is hot. Prior to reInvent, which you'll will be at. Absolutely. Um, Recovered X is the product, 2.5 is a release. So Correct. you got a, a point release on your core product. Correct. Welcome to this conversation. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited to uh, share the news. Big day for us. All right, so let's get into the hard news. You guys are announcing a point release of the latest product, which is your core flagship, Recover X. Correct. Love the name, love the branding, the X in there. Reminds me of the iPhone, so makes me want to buy one. But, uh, you know, it's we the X make, Factor. We can make that happen. John. You guys are the X Factor, so we've been pretty bullish on what you guys are doing. I actually like the positioning. It's cloud, you're taking advantage of the, the growth in the cloud. What is this new product release? Why, what's the big deal? Yep. What's in it for the customer? So, what's it, so, what we're, so I'll start with the news, and then we'll take a small step back and sort of talk about why exactly we're doing what we're doing. So RecoverX 2.5 is the latest in our flagship RecoverX line. It's a cloud data management platform. And the market that we're going after and the market we're disrupting is the traditional data management space. The proliferation of modern applications. Which includes which companies? Uh, so the, the Veritas's of the world, the Commvaults of the world, the DL, Dell EMC's of the world, anybody that was in the traditional backup 20, recovery. 20 year old space. architected data backup and recovery software. You, you stole my, uh, you stole okay. my fun <laughs> fact, which is, no, but, but very, very fair point, which is that the average age approximately of you know, the leading backup and recovery software products is approximately 20 years. So a lot's changed in the last 20 years, not, you know, not the least of which has been this proliferation of modern applications. Mm -hmm. Okay, which are geo distributed microservices oriented, and the rapid proliferation of multi cloud. That disrupts the traditional notion of data management, specifically backup and recovery. That's what we're going after rec with RecoverX. Yeah. RecoverX 2.5 is the most recent version. News on three fronts, fronts. One is around advanced recovery, and we can double click into those, but it's essentially all about giving you more data awareness, more granularity to what data you want to recover and where you want to put it, which yep. becomes very important in the multi-cloud world. Number two is around what we call data center yep. aware backup and recovery. That's all about supporting geo-distributed application environments, which again is, a very, is, a, is the new normal in the cloud. And then number three is around enterprise hardening, specifically around security. So it's all about okay. us increase flexibility and, and new capabilities for the multi-cloud environment and continue to enterprise hard in the product. Okay, so you guys say significant upgrade. Let's, yep. I want to just look at that. I'm also pretty critical, and you know how I feel on this, so don't take it personal. Yeah. Multi-cloud is not a real deal yet. It's in statement of value that customers are saying, it's coming, but cloud's here today, regular cloud. So, so, so multi-cloud, well, what does multi-cloud actually mean? I mean okay. I, so could, I could have multiple clouds, but I'm not actually moving workloads across clouds yet. Or uh, I disagree. Okay. I actually disagree. Um, we, we've got, we have multiple right, so customers. So debunk that. I'll put, I will debunk that. So number one use case for RecoverX is backup and recovery, okay? But with the twist of the fact that it's for these modern applications running these geo-distributed environments, which means it's not about backing up my data center. It's about, I need to make a copy of my data, but I want to back it up in the cloud. I'm running my application natively in the cloud, so I want to back up in the cloud. I'm running my application in the cloud, but I actually want to back up from the cloud back to my private cloud. So that's in lies one, a backup and recovery, an operational recovery use case that involves multi-cloud. That's number one. Number two use case for RecoverX is what we talk about around data mobility. Yeah. Okay. So you have and a different definition of multi-cloud. Yeah, well, sorry, what was your, the, our definition of multi-cloud is fundamentally a customer using multiple clouds, whether it be a private okay. on-prem, GCP, AWS, yeah. Oracle, yeah. any mix and match. I That's buy our that. definition. I buy that. Where I was getting critical of some, was um, a workload. Okay. I have a workload mm -hmm. and I'm running it on Amazon. It's been architected for Amazon. Yeah. But then I, got, I also want to run that same workload on Amaz Azure and Google. Okay. Or Oracle or somewhere else. Yeah. I have to re-engineer it to move, and I can't share the data. So to me, well, multi-cloud means I can run it anywhere, my app anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Backup is a little bit different. You're saying the cloud environments can be multiple environments for your solution. That is correct. So you're correct. looking at it from the other perspective. Correct, and the, and what we, the category, we, we, the way we define ourselves is application-centric data management. And what that essentially means is we don't care what the underlying infrastructure is. So if you look at traditional backup and recovery products, they're LUN based, 
so I'm going to back up my storage LUN, or they're VM-based. Mm -hmm. And a lot of big companies made a lot of money doing that. The problem is, there are no LUNs and VMs in a hybrid cloud or multi-cloud environment. The only thing that's consistent across application, across cloud environments, is the data and the applications that are running. So where we focus is we're 100% application centric. So we integrate at the database level. The database is the foundation of any application you create. We integrate there, which makes us agnostic okay. to the underlying infrastructure. We run, mm -hmm. just as examples, we have customers running next generation applications on-prem. We have customers running next generation applications on AWS and GCP. Any permutation of the above. And to your point about back to the multi-cloud, we've got organizations doing backup with us but then we also have organizations using us to take copies of their backup data and put them on whatever clouds they want for mm -hmm. things like test dev refresh, yeah. or performance testing, or business analytics, whatever you might yeah. want to do. So you're pretty flexible, I like that. So we talked um, um, before on other segments, and certainly the, even this morning, about um, modern stacks, mm -hmm. yep. modern applications. This is the big to-do item for all CXOs and CIOs. I need a modern infrastructure, I need modern applications, I need modern yeah. developers. I need modern everything, <laughs> hyper, micro, whatever, right. ultra. Whatever buzzword you um, use. But you guys in this announcement have a couple key things I want to just get your get more explanation cool. on. One, advanced recovery, backup anywhere, recover anywhere, and you said enterprise grade security, the third thing. Yep. So let's, let's just break them down one at a time. Cool. Advanced recovery for Datos 2.5, uh, Recover X yep. 2.5. What is advanced recovery? It's very specifically about providing high levels of granularity for recovering your data on two fronts. So the use case is, again, backup. I want, I need to recover data, mm -hmm. but I don't want to necessarily recover everything. I want to get smarter about the data I want to recover. Or it could be for a non-operational use cases, which is I want to spin up a copy of data to run test dev or to do performance testing on. What advanced recovery specifically means is, number one, we've introduced the notion of queryable recovery. What that means is that I can say things like star dot John star, and the results returning from that, because we're application centric and we integrated the database, we give you visibility to that. I want to see everything star dot John star, or I want to recover data from a very specific row and a very specific column, or I want to mask data that I do not want to be recovered and I don't want people to see. The implications of that are, think about that from a performance standpoint. Now I only recover the data I need, so I'm very, very high levels of granularity based upon a query, mm -hmm. so I'm fast from an RTO standpoint. The second part of it is, for non-operational requirements, I only move the data that is select to that data set, and number three is, it helps you with things like GDPR compliance and PII compliance, because you can mass data out. So that's query-based recovery, that's number one. The second piece of advanced recovery is what we call uh, incremental recovery. That is granular recovery based upon a timestamp. So you can get within individual points in time, mm -hmm. so you can get to a very high level of granularity based upon time. So it's all about visibility to your data and getting very granular smart in a smart way to what you want to recover. So if I kind of hear what you're saying, what you're saying is essentially you built in the operational effectiveness of being effective operationally. Mm -hmm. You know, time to back recovery, all that good RTO stuff. You know, getting stuff, restoring operationally. Very, Qu very quickly. Very fast. And so there's a smart way. So there's a speed game there, yep. which is table stakes. But your real value here is all these compliance nightmares that are coming down the pike. Yep. GDPR and others, there's going to be more. Absolutely. Um, I mean, it could be HIPAA, it could be GDPR, anything anything that involves... Policy. A, a policy, based. anything that requires we're completely policy driven, and you can, you can create a policy to mask certain data based upon yeah. the criteria you want to put in. So it's all about... So you're the best of performance and you got some tunability. And you're, it's all about being data aware. It's all about being data aware. So that's what advanced recovery is. Okay, back up anywhere, recover anywhere. What does that mean? So what that means is, the old world of backup recovery was, I had a database running in my data center, and I would say, database, please take a snapshot of yourself so I can make a copy. The new world of, of cloud is that these microservices-based modern applications typically run, they're by definition distributed, and in many cases they run distributed across, they're geo-distributed. So what, what data center aware backup recovery is, use a perfect example, we have a customer. They're running their e-commerce, it's a leading online reservation, restaurant reservations company. They're running their e-commerce application on-prem, interesting enough, but it's based on Cassandra, distributed database. They're running, excuse me, MongoDB, sorry. They're running geo-distributed, sharded MongoDB mm -hmm. clusters. 
That's, that's a mouth. Anybody in the traditional backup and recovery, their head would explode when you say that. In the modern application world, that's a completely normal use case. They have a data center in the US, they have a data center in the UK. What they want is they want to be able to do local backup and recovery while maintaining complete global consistency of their data. So again, it's about being, it's about recovery time, ultimately, but it's also being data aware and focusing only on the data that you need to back up recovery. So it's about performance, but then it's also about compliance, it's about governance. That's what data center aware backup yeah, And that's is. the global phenomenon people are having with the geo. Absolutely. The yeah, I mean, it could be, you could be I mean, within country. It could be any number of different things that drive that. We can do it because we're data aware. And, and that creates complexity centric. for the customer. You guys can take that complexity away Correct. from the whole, the global, regional, where the data can sit. Correct. That's, I'd say two things, actually. To give the customers credit, the customers building these apps are actually getting a lot smarter about what their data is and so where their data is. So they expect this feature. Ab oh, absolutely. So no, absolutely. This, is, this is, I wouldn't call it table stakes because we're the only kids on the block that can do it, but this is in direct response to our customers that are building these new apps. I want to get into some of the uh, environmental and customer drivers in, in, in a second, but we'll nail the last segment down because I, I want to unpack the whole you know, why is this trend happening? Cool. What's the gestation period? What's the main enabler for you? But, okay, final point on this, on the, on the key advance, significant announcements, my favorite topic, enterprise yeah. grade security. What the hell does that mean? First it, of all, from your standpoint, what the industry's trying to solve the same thing. So, yeah, it's, industry, it's, uh, enterprise grade security, what are you guys providing in this? It's number one, it's basically security protocols, so TLS and SSL. This is, this is weed stuff, TLS, SSL, so secure protocol support. It's integration with LDAP, so if organizations are running, primarily if they're running on-prem and they're, support, they're running in an LDAP environment, we're supported there. And then we've got Kerberos support for Kerberos authentication. So it's all about just checking the boxes around the different security So this is like in between the protocols. toes, the details Correct. around compliance, identity management. Bingo. I mean, we just had Centrified Cyber Connect Conference and yep. you're seeing a lot of focus on identity. Absolutely, and, and these are, and the reason that that's sort of from a market standpoint, the reason that these are very important now is because the applications that we're supporting are not, these are not science experiments. These are e-commerce applications. These are core business applications that, are, that mainstream enterprises are running and they need to be protected. And they're bringing the true classic enterprise security, authentication, authorization. Are you guys aligning with those features or is there anything significant in that section? That From an enterprise security yeah. standpoint, it's primarily about where we provide the support, so we integrate with all of those environments and we can check the boxes Oh, yeah. absolutely, TLS, absolutely, we've got that box checked. So you're not competing with other cyber security? No, no, this is purely, we need to do this. This so is part of our This is where you partner. partner. Well, this no, this is literally, for, the, for these things, it's literally just us providing the protocol support. So that, you know, LDAP's a good example. We support yeah. LDAP, so we show up, and if there's somebody's yeah, but, using but it, but you look at the, the other security solutions as a way to integrate with. Yeah. Not so much. Oh, absolutely, no, this okay. is, has nothing to do with competition. It's just supporting, I mean, Google has their own protocol, you know, security protocols, we support those. So does, G, you know, so does Amazon. Yeah. I really don't want to go into some of the customer benefits and let the folks go to the Datos website, datos.io is the website. If you want to check out all their customer references, I don't want to kind of drill on that. I kind of want to again, really end this segment on the real the core issue for me is mm -hmm. kind of reading the tea leaves. Mm -hmm. You guys are different. You're now kind of seeing some traction and some growth. You're a new kind of animal in the zoo, if you will. <laughs> you're kind of, and you've and you got a relevant product. Why is it happening now? And I'm trying to get to understanding cloud obviously is enabling a lot of stuff. You guys yeah. are, are uh, an effect of that, a data point of what the cloud has enabled as a venture. Yep. Yep. Everything that you're doing, the value you create is the function of cloud. Yes. And data and how data is moving. Where is this coming from? How is it So where just recently? Is it a gestation period of a few years? Where did this come from? You mentioned uh, some comparisons to like yes. Oracle and. So I'll answer that in sort of, in, we, we like to use history as our guide. So I'll, I'll answer that both in, ma in macro terms and then I'll answer it in micro terms. From a macro term standpoint, this is being driven by the proliferation of new data sources is the easiest way to look at it. So if you let history be your guide, there was about a seven to eight year proliferation or, or gap between the proliferation of, of Oracle as the primary traditional relational database data source mm -hmm. and the advent of Veritas, who really defined themselves as the de facto standard for traditional on-prem data center relational you know, data management. You look at that same model, you look at the proliferation of VMware in the late 90s, about a seven to eight year gestation with the, with the, with the rapid adoption of Veeam. You know, in the early days, a lot of folks laughed at Veeam, like who's going to back up VMs? People aren't going to use VMs in the, in the enterprise. Now you look at Veeam, great company, they've done some really tremendous things, carving out much yeah. more than a niche, providing backup and recovery and availability <laughs> yeah. in a VM-based yeah. environment. 
The exact same thing's happening now. If you go yeah. back six to seven years from now, you had the, the early adoption of the MongoDBs, the Cassandras, the Couches. More recently, you've got a much faster acceleration around the yeah. DynamoDBs and the, and the cloud databases. We're riding that same wave. This is a side effect of, of the enabling of the growth of cloud. So yes. Similar to what you did in VMware with VMs and database for Oracle. You've got to take it to the next These level. These new data sources are completely driven by the fact that the cloud is enabling this completely distributed, far more agile, far more dynamic, far less expensive yeah. you know, uh, application deployment model and a new way of providing data management is required. That's what we do. Yeah, I mean, it's a function of maturity, one. As Jeff Frick, our general manager of the Cube, always says, the industry moves to its next point of failure. In this yep. case, failure is problem that you yep. solve, right? So the headaches that come from the awesomeness of the growth. Absolutely, the so cloud, and, goodness. and to answer that micro-wise briefly, so that was the macro, the micro is, the proliferation of, the, the migration of, you know, the movement from monolithic apps to microservices based app, it's happening. And the cloud is what's enabling that. Yep. The move from traditional on-prem to hybrid cloud is absolutely happening, that's by definition the cloud. The third piece, which is cloud-centric, is the world's moving from a scale-up world to an elastic compute, elastic storage model. We call that the modern IT stack. Traditional backup and recovery, traditional data management doesn't work in the new modern IT stack. That's the market we're playing in. That's the market we're disrupting, is all that traditional stuff moving to the modern IT stack. Okay, Datos IO announcing a 2.5 release of RecoverX, their flagship product, their startup. Um, growing in, out of Los Gatos. Uh, Peter Schmales here, the CMO. Where are you going to be next? What's going on? We're gonna see, I know we're going to see it reinvented in, in two, a week and a half. Or? Absolutely, That's, so we got two stops. Uh, well, actually the, one, the, the, the next stop on the tour is, uh, is reinvent. So looking, yeah, absolutely right. looking forward to being back on theCUBE yeah. uh, at reinvent. And company feels good about this, things are good. You got good money in the bank, you're growing. We've, we yeah. feel fantastic. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, been, uh, it's been, it's fascinating to watch as things evolve. The conversations we have now versus even six months ago. Um, it's sort of the, the tipping point if people get it. You sort yeah. of explain it, so yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's data management for modern applications. You know, are you deploying modern applications? Absolutely. You know, Share one example to end the segment on what you hear over and over again from customers that illuminates what you guys are about as a company, the DNA, the value proposition, and the impact and the results and value for customers. So I'll use a case study as an example. You know, one of the world's largest home, retail, home improvement retailers. Old way was they ran their multi-billion dollar e-commerce infrastructure running an IBM DB2 database running in their on-prem, you know, on-prem on data center. They've moved their world, they're now running, they've re-architected their application, it's now e completely microservices based running on Cassandra, deployed 100% in Google Cloud Platform. So they fund them and they did that because they wanted to be more agile, they wanted to be more flexible, it's a far more cost-effective deployment model, they are all in on the cloud and they needed the next generation backup recovery data protection data management solution, which is exactly what we do. So that, that's the, okay. the value, backup's not a new problem. People need to protect data, and they need to be able to take advantage All right, so here's the, the here's the final, final question. I don't, I'm a customer watching this mm -hmm. video, you like, bottom line me, I'm kind of hearing all this stuff. When do I call you? What are the signals? What are the little smoke signals I see in my organization burning that I need? When do I need to call you guys, Datos? You should call Datos, Datos IO anytime. If you're doing anything with development of modern applications, number one, if you're doing anything with, with hybrid cloud, you should call us because you're going to need to reevaluate your overall data management strategy. It's that simple. All right, Peter Schmelz, the CMO of Datos, one of the hot companies here in Silicon Valley at a Los Gatos, California, of course. We're in Palo Alto at theCUBE studios. I'm John Furrier. This is a CUBE Conversation. Thanks for watching.